the U.S. and U.K. with support from Australia, Bahrain, Canada, and the Netherlands conducted strikes yesterday against eight Houthi targets in Yemen in response to the Iranian regime-backed Houthis' continued attacks against international and commercial shipping as well as naval vessels transiting the Red Sea. These strikes were precise, proportionate, and intended to further disrupt and degrade the capabilities the Houthis have been using to threaten global trade and the lives of innocent mariners. Targets included a Houthi underground storage site and locations associated with the Houthis' missile and air surveillance capabilities. Of note, shortly after taking these strikes, an additional Houthi target was struck by the U.S. in self-defense, destroying an anti-ship cruise missile that was prepared to launch and which presented an imminent threat to vessels operating in the region. Again, our aim remains to de-escalate tensions and restore stability in the Red Sea. But, as our joint statement yesterday emphasized, we will not hesitate to defend the lives and the free flow of commerce in one of the world's most critical waterways in the face of continued threats. Tom. First of all, Pat, can you give us an estimate of uh, how much uh, Houthis have been degraded by the numbers you just gave out, percentage-wise, ballpark? Um, again, Tom, I can't go into the specifics in terms of the totality of their capabilities and provide percentages other than, again, um, you know, it, it's fairly significant when, when you look at the missile launch and deployment facilities, missiles, you know, you're, you're talking over 50, uh, you know, when, when you add those numbers together in addition to the other capabilities. So clearly a, a degradation of capability. Um, we have been very focused on targeting the kinds of things that they've been employing or using to conduct attacks against international shipping and mariners, and that will continue to be our focus. Uh, and so the, the, the last Houthi attack that I'm tracking was on 18th of January, so five days ago. Um, as you know, since that time, we have taken several self-defense strikes uh, when there was an imminent, th imminent threat or uh, an anticipated launch. Um, but again, we'll continue to, to stay focused on that. Can you give us an update on al-Assad uh, damage assessment? And also, there were two uh, service members wounded. What's their status? And then I guess you're going to be monitoring others for TBI, potentially uh, numbers. And finally, was this the first time ballistic missiles were fired at uh, U.S. personnel in Iraq? Yeah, thanks, Tom. So a um, couple things there. Um, so in terms of the of al-Assad uh, and the attack that we saw over the weekend. Um, to my knowledge, no significant damage to the facilities. Um, I am tracking reports today uh, of another attack uh, at al-Assad, which were, um, you know, heard those reports, we're looking into it, and so we'll have more to provide on that uh, as it becomes available. In terms of the personnel that were injured in the attack over the weekend, uh, at the time we were tracking uh, two uh, U.S. service personnel uh, that uh, suffered TBI. Um, since then, we have uh, identified an, two additional service members for a total of four. To my knowledge, all have returned to duty at this point. Uh, but again, a, as you've seen in these kinds of things in the past, those numbers can fluctuate. So we'll continue to, to pay attention to that. Hey, Thanks. Missiles, uh, uh, last, uh, the last ballistic missile attacks uh, were in November, November 21st of last year, uh, also at Al-Assad. Jennifer. Um, Pat, what kind of drones are the Houthis using? Are they the same Iranian drones that are being used and shipped to Ukraine? Jennifer, I don't have this specific variant, um, but based on uh, based on my understanding, uh, these are one-way attack drones of Iranian origin. Is it your expectation that this um, dynamic in the Red Sea is going to continue until the uh, until there's a sustained ceasefire in Gaza. In other words, are you expecting, is the off-ramp going to be like a settlement in Gaza? How long do you think this is going to go on for? Yeah, well, obviously I don't want to stand up here and predict the future. You've heard me talk about what our goal is, uh, which is to ensure that international shipping and mariners can transit this vital waterway safely and securely. Uh, and so we'll continue to to work toward that end, uh, both through Operation Prosperity Guardian, uh, which is a defensive coalition to help safeguard shipping, uh, but also with the international community uh, to conduct strikes against Houthi military targets uh, that are being employed in these attacks when we need to. Uh, and so, um, 
you know, that will remain our focus. We're not, we're not looking to go beyond that. Uh, and of course, the Houthis have a vote in this as well, and they could make the choice to stop imposing costs on themselves and their capabilities and stop these attacks immediately. So there's a distinction between us, Operation Prosperity Guardian and what we saw yesterday. Correct. And, and that, the name of that operation? Uh, there is no uh, departmental named operation for the strikes last night. And in I know you don't want to get into, like, the extent to which the Houthis have been degraded, but can you give a sense of how long it might take them to replenish their stocks once this is all over? Um, I can't give you that um, for a few reasons. One of, I, you know, I'm just not going to get into intelligence in terms of, you know, their resupply and refresh rates. Um, you know, obviously that's something that we'll keep a, a close eye on. Um, but these strikes, uh, from a physical standpoint, are having an impact on their ability to conduct attacks, um, as well as in, you know, diplomatic and international uh, standpoint.